Hey guys, this is Pastor Tim Williams, lead pastor here at City Church of the Treasure Coast. Thank you for joining me tonight for Seven on the Seven. It's our nightly time together in God's Word, our nightly time of encouragement as we go through this amazing challenge and this uh, quarantine and the pandemic together. We are not alone. God is with us and we are together in His love. So I've been sharing every night here at 7 on the 7, uh, John 16, which says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. And so we want you to know today that as dark as it may seem with the physical challenges you're going through, as dark as it may seem with the financial and the job and the career challenges you're facing, and as dark as it may seem with the emotional challenges we're facing, with social distancing, which not being able to touch and reach out and see our friends and family, we want you to know that God has made a way and He will overcome these obstacles for us. He is an overcomer. He overcame so we can be overcomers and we can overcome. Now, the last time I taught with you, I shared about a time in Israel's history where they had turned to idols and had believed that idols, the Asherah pole and Baal, were what brought rain or growth to their lives. That was their market. That was their provision. And they gave all credit not to God, who was the source, but to these idols. In fact, I read 1 Samuel 12, 21 that says, Do not turn away after useless idols. And a guy named Elijah comes on the scene in the midst of all of this. In the midst of this great wealth, an evil king that brought these systems to them and them not being thankful to God and remembering the miracles of God. This guy named Elijah shows up and here's what he says in 1 Kings 17, verse 17. Now Elijah the Tishbite from Tishba and Gilead said to Ahab, the evil king, uh, Elijah said, As the Lord the God of Israel lives, whom I serve, there will be neither dew nor rain in the next few years except at my word. So here's the message. Elijah walks in to their world, their system, their blessings, and he says, hey, you guys want to cry out to idols for a little bit of candy? And you want to worship idols for the provision that they give you? He says, guess what, pup? For the next several years, the market of precipitation is shutting down. The market of rain is going away. Not just for 24 hours. He says it's closed until further notice. And in a little while, you're going to notice that it's closed even further. Now, I want you to understand, just like in America and around the world right now, this was catastrophic to Israel. Um, the bulk of the whole economy that they had was focused on agriculture. And God says, you looked to idols for your provision. You prayed to idols for fertility. You've had faith in yourself and in your idols. And guess what? You guys, I'm closing up the clouds. I'm literally putting the snafu on the clouds. And the farming business, when there's no rain, there's no crops. And if there's no crops, there's no ring-a-ding-ding meal time for anybody. And if there's no rain, you're going to be thirsty. So if you thought Baal was your source, you thought wrong. And God says, when I do this, God says this to every one of us, when we do this, when we put an idol up in our lives as a believer, God will come in and say, it's time to tear down the idol. Time to tear down the idol. See, salvation is free. It's a gift of God. It's a free flowing, cool water source. But when I put an idol in the middle of that source, sometimes I cut off the water flow. And what I'm asking us to do, church, is turn the valve back on. That valve of worship, of crying out to God. Somebody call the water company. There's no flow. No, let's call the Holy Spirit. Let's call on God. Let's say, God, we need you to overcome this. We need you to overcome this. And I want you to write this down. Put it in your phone. Put it wherever you are tonight. If you're a child watching with your parents, don't forget this. If we are faithful in the drought, God provides a way out. If we are faithful in the drought, God provides a way out. Look at what happened with Elijah during all of this. During this catastrophic drought, loss of provision, loss of markets. Verse uh, 2 uh, tells us, Then the word of the Lord came to Elijah, Leave here, turn eastward, 
and hide in the Kareth Ravine east of the Jordan. You will drink from the brook, and, uh, and I have directed the ravens to supply you with food there. This is what God tells Elijah because Elijah was faithful. He says, in the drought, I've made a way out. In the desert, I've made provision. In the punishment that everyone else is suffering because they worship idols, I've made a way out for you. And as we look at this verse, it's really, really cool because we see that God had two provision sources for Elijah. A natural provision source, the brook that didn't dry up, and a supernatural one, the ravens that delivered food right to Elijah. We all know about food delivery right now, right? This is better than DoorDash. This is ravens bringing it in right there. I want to talk to you more about that the next time we're together. But tonight I want to leave you with this truth from God's word. In the drought, in what you're suffering through right now, God has made a way out. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. If you will cry out to him, he will take you to a private place of healing, a private place of cool water, a private place where his source always flows. And we're going to do that right now. Guys, we're going to cry out. We're going to pray out right now together. Lord, we pray that in this time of drought, Lord, where the things that we are used to being able to access and have as much of as we want, some of us, Lord, have made them idols. We repent tonight and we ask, Father, that we would re realize and trust and stand on the fact that you are our source. Jesus, you are our source. And God, we pray that you'd bring natural healing, natural provision like the brook Elijah had through doctors and nurses and scientists and, and government, that you'd bring natural healing. And we pray, Lord, that you would bring supernatural healing, God. When the natural is not enough, that you would bring supernatural touch to those that are sick right now, Lord, that are crying out, that hear my voice, God, heal them. God, those who have lost their job, that you bring financial healing and a miracle, God, that hear my voice, that you'd bring it to them now in Jesus' name those emotionally God and spiritually that are empty God that you would be their supernatural source tonight we believe it God we declare it in Jesus name amen thank you so much for joining us for seven on the seven it's been an honor a privilege to come into your house every night here at City Church of the Treasure Coast on the beautiful Treasure Coast in Florida. We can't wait to get back together in person and we believe that day is coming soon. As we move towards that day, I need to ask you to do something. If, if you've been touched by this broadcast uh, or our 9 and 11 a.m. broadcast on Sunday, would you click on that Facebook banner that says you can give now and just give a gift of $10 or $20, $50 or whatever you can give so that we can continue through our food bank and through all of our ministry to reach the communities of not just the Treasure Coast, but this state, this country, and beyond. We're feeding about 200 families, uh, 200 family members a week right here. Please today, if you can help us, click on there and give a guess, gift. We love you. We're looking out for you. We're glad that you joined with us, and we'll see you tomorrow for 7 on the 7th.